welcome to the next session of this course in this session you will be learning about different subroutines available in system verilog so system verilog supports two types of subroutines they are named functions and tasks the idea behind using a subroutine or function or task is common across every programming language so you have a set of code that you need to place in different places or that is repeatedly appearing in your code or you want to uh, abstract some part of your code into a different portion to make it more readable so those kind of code you can place in a in a subroutine and you can call the subroutine appropriately whenever you wanted to do that functionality in system verilog first we will look at functions system, as we have already discussed system verilog support functions and tasks so function is a mechanism of reusing the code and this is a syntax to uh, declare a function keyword function followed by the return data type then the function name within the bracket the argument list and the return data type uh, need to be void if there is if it is not returning the function is not returning any code otherwise it could be any valid data type including user defined data types and in the argument list uh, it should specify the direction of the data flow so in system verilog the argument should definitely give any of these uh, four options uh, as a direction so it could be an input or output or in out or rough if this it is an input all input variables of uh, the value of input variables will be copied in into the uh, local function variables at the big at the very beginning of the execution of the uh, function the same way if it is an out output variable in a function the copy uh, they will copy the value at the end of execution of the function if it is an inner variable this copying will happen at the beginning as well as at the end uh, of this execution but if the direction is specified as a rough then a, instead of doing a pass by value mechanism the subroutine will do a pass by reference mechanism so the difference between a pass by value and pass by reference is that in all these three cases the variables in the function and the variables where it is getting called will be entirely different so what the function will do is it will copy the value of the formal arguments from the actual arguments but when you when you use pass by reference method in the function the same exact same variable or the exact same pointer will be passed to the function so any change that you make within the function will affect the calling variable as well uh, in a different way the same variable will be uh, reflected both in the calling place and in the function so that mechanism is called pass by reference uh, it's a programming concept and in system verilog a pass by reference is given by specifying the input direction as rough also remember that if you are not giving an input direction the default direction is input in case of a function and now let's look at a, an example syntax so here i'm declaring a function which is returning a logic 15 down to 0 type so that this is a return type and this is a function name my function my fun one and within the uh, within the bracket you will list all the arguments so remember that you need to specify the direction of the input as well as the type of the input uh, i mean the direction of the arguments as well as the type of the argument so here i need to specify like it's an input argument it's an integer type uh, there are two variables of this type so x and y both x and y are uh, input integer type and uh, addr and data are of uh, input again they are, they are of data type logic 15 down to 0 and, and one more input of different type input bit usually in a function you will uh, use only inputs and uh, very rarely you will use output variables uh, in a function and finally uh, after the end of this code you need to specify a return statement so the return statement will end the function uh, execution whenever a return statement is encountered it will immediately uh, execute uh, i mean break the functionality and return back to the calling place place if you are returning a value that value will be returned back to the calling place as well so remember that in this case the return type should match with the return type they have specified in the function definition so the return type should be of uh, um, data type logic 15 down to 0 here system verilog supports returning a value without the explicit return statement but it is not recommended to use that practice as you have already seen the default direction statement is input therefore in this example you can skip this and rewrite as a simple code like 
y function index y logic 1520 ADDR data and bit wr next is task so function is again similar to uh, task is again similar to function but the main difference between task and function is function is something that need to be executed within zero time but a task can consume simulation time within it so here is a syntax for declaring a task the keyword task followed by the task name then the argument list and the argument list specification is again similar to that uh, in case of a function it can be input output in out or uh, it can be rough if it is passed by reference method but there is no return value there is no return uh, type specification here as well because a task cannot return a value to the calling place if at all you wanted to pass something uh, from the task to the calling place calling place you have to use the output direction specification there but that is again not a recommended practice um, and the default direction is again input uh, if nothing is specified which is again same as that is the case of a uh, function so here is an example of defining a task within the task and end task keyword we will uh, specify the task functionality here task followed by the task name the argument list uh, with the directions finally we'll quickly go through the difference between task and function again the main difference is a function cannot consume simulation time it need to be completed in zero time but a task can consume simulation time there is no time boundation for that and the next difference is a function can return a value but it can return only a single value but a task cannot return a value to the calling place now the question is where you need to write a function and where you need to write a task so whenever you want to do some functionality functionality like doing some mathematical operation functionality like making a conversion convert a packet from one form to another form so these are functionality some mathematical functionality or some some function some user defined functionality you can define a function and typically functions can return a, a result value or it can re return a status like whether the conversion was successful or it was a failure or it can uh, do a comparison and say um, that fun comparison function can say whether the comparison was successful or failure something like that but when you wanted to abstract a set of code into a, into a subroutine which is actually consuming time then you have no other option other than choosing a task a typical example would be a driver code you you wanted to modularize your code in such a way that certain functionalities are put into into a into a set of into a specific place or into a subroutine and some other functionalities are put into some other subroutines but these are consuming times then you need to write different tasks for them and you need to call this task at a higher level so this summarizes this session you have learned how to write task and function and what is the difference between task and function remember that functions are synthesizable and you will uh, you will usually see functions in rtl code as well but in general tasks are not synthesizable because they are something that is consuming time